Um, you know, I, I'm the founding uh, director of uh, Civic Leadership USA, actually. And the person who spoke there, uh, you know, was my mentor, uh, Sandy Chow. And actually, Sandy and I uh, started a number of things, including the Berkeley China Alumni Association. And kind of echoing what Andrew said, I actually, my first company, I, I failed, actually, miserably. And, and it, it will be no, no surprises that if any of you guys start, you know, your own first company, it will fail. But that's okay. You know, just like yeah, what just get said. that failure in young. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> well, absolutely. You know, I, I think I think it's okay to fail in in you know in Silicon Valley in the U.S. But just exactly like what Andrew said, you know, really want to get you know uh, sort of a mentor, someone that you can look up to and and whatnot. And, and this is really sort of the whole point about our conversation today. I think you know today conversation is on entrepreneurship and impact. Uh, and it's really meant because we heard, you know, many of you who are here, who are, you know, like youth leaders. And one day, uh, you're going to take the big flag. Uh, and that flag is going to lead us forward. Uh, how did you become who you are today? Uh, so, Sanjeev, what do you start? So, um, I did my college here in Texas. Uh, came to school from India, went to Afghanistan for a while and then came here and really didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, my, I wanted to get become a doctor. My parents wanted me to be an engineer. Said, okay, fine, I'll be an engineer, going to school, and didn't really want to study engineering. So, you know, some classes I passed, some classes I flunked. Anyway, I went, took about five years, graduated from uh, Texas Tech and Lubbock Christian University and then decided uh, my final year, had, uh, the first year I didn't get, I got D's and F's, and the final year I had straight A's, and my uh, teachers said, you don't need to take your finals. So I packed <laughs> my stuff in, the, in my car and drove out 28 hours straight to California. My brother was here, came home, and didn't know what to do. He was starting a company at that time, and uh, he said, hey, why don't you join me? And so I got, became an entrepreneur, essentially, but literally not knowing what I wanted to do in my life. And uh, I think, so I'm an accidental entrepreneur. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's, it's, as I went along, I thought I could be a teacher. I was studying math. And I said, you know, that's something I really love. I like math and I like uh, helping kids. Other students would come to me and learn, and it was great. But uh, in those days with math, you could not do very much. You could not get a job. You could not make any money. So started off with my brother at making $700 a month. And, uh, you know, we were starting off and went about building a pretty successful company, took it public in 94 on the NASDAQ. Wow. Um, and then uh, I, my father, who was uh, working for the Indian government, resigned and came here and uh, went to school. At the age of 52, he went and did a PhD at Ohio State. Whoa. And uh, he came here and uh, moved to the valley as well, and he said, hey, I want to start something. And so he started a med-device company, and I joined him, helping him raise money, put a business plan together. And it, that was, it gave me, in that process, we started working on a device for breast cancer, and it was, you know, came across people who had passed away with breast cancer, their, their wives or others, and uh, started to see that what we were doing was making a difference. In And I was at the same time helping with Seprogen, and uh, one of our uh, senior VPs came down with cancer, and uh, we were working with a company called Amgen down in Thousand Oaks, LA, and uh, they came up with a drug which was made on the product we were making, otherwise that drug would never have been made. And Ernie Gruen uh, talked to my brother and me one day while he was in the hospital, 
And he said, you know, had we not done this, I would not be alive. And it hit home that what we do actually makes a difference. We can make a difference in people's lives who we know. And I was, uh, I think, about 28 or so at that time. And that started me towards social entrepreneurship and what I needed to do. So it gave me a, gave me a purpose, so which I didn't have in school, in high school, in college. Suddenly I had a purpose for what I wanted to do in my life. <coughs> well said, actually, Sanjeev, and, and thank you for sharing that. Um, you know, I think that we oftentimes, we, we know Silicon Valley as integrated circuits, but it's really, in simplest form, it's called Indians and Chinese, right? It's IC, you know, it's right. Indians and the Chinese. And, and Sanjeev is our Indian brother, you know, in Silicon Valley. Uh, so interestingly, 50% of my investors in my current company are Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, so we, we've already have this marriage of Indians and Chinese. Uh, so thank you, Sanjeev, for sharing that. Uh, David, please share your story. Yeah. Can, can you hear me? Cool. So I was actually born in Canada. So I was born in Ottawa, Canada, and I moved to Vancouver when I was about two. How I ended up moving was it, Ottawa's cold, really cold. I'm sure you're from New York, you know that. <laughs> and my parents had enough of it. They were like, we're going to go back to China. Screw the cold. So <laughs> at that time, there was no direct flight from Ottawa to China. So they, tr they had a layover in Vancouver. They got to Vancouver. They got out of the airport. And their pl flight was delayed. And they were like, OK, let's just visit the city since we have a day. They got out. They went to the city center. And they're like, we love it here. We're just going to stay. So they never went back to China. And that's how I ended up in Vancouver. So <laughs> cool. that was my Vancouver story. That's how. That's why I was r raised in Vancouver. And throughout my entire elementary, middle school, high school life, I was in Vancouver. I, n I never thought about leaving Vancouver until it was time to apply for colleges. And everyone asked me, what do you want to do? And I was like, I have no idea. People were like, be a doctor. And I was like, nah. They're like, be a lawyer. I'm like, maybe not really. And then, <laughs> and then I end up, I couldn't apply to anything because everything in Canada was you have to be a specific path. You have to do this or that. So I was like, I just want to be in a city with good weather. So I came to San Francisco. That's how I came here. And I, I went to Berkeley and I studied business. So. Hey, you guys kind of listen up. What David said is he had to come all the way, all the way from Canada to be here. You guys all are here blessed with great weather, OK? So give yourself a round of applause, man. So, so that's how I came here. And during that time, so when I was in high school, when I was 15 years old, 14, 15, I started an organization called Social Diversity for Children Foundation. And it was because there was a bunch of things that were happening, but I really wanted to make my voice heard in the community and not just have the adults in the room speak on behalf of me. And I thought, why don't I just bring youth together? And if we have enough youth together, we can make an impact. We can make noise. We can actually do something. And that's how it ended up starting to what it, I built it today. So. Well, that's awesome. Um, you know, thank you for sharing that, David. Uh, the comment I really want to make is just to, to reinforce David's experience for the young people here. Because when I raise your hand, um, so there, the the skills required to be an entrepreneur, like the stuff we're talking about, like it seems I know, like very, very advanced and far out. Um, but what he did at fourteen is something that any of you can do. And as a young person, you have like a, a real power around your youth. Um, so there are two types of things you can do. One is start a business, which has its own suite of things. And then there is help a nonprofit or uh, push a cause forward. And there, the second is actually much, much more there for you because if you reach out to people because you're young, they have to say yes and help you. <laughs> if they do not, then they are not nice people. So you can use your youth and say, hey, I care about this, like this organization. Just think about like right now as I'm talking to you, like what do you care about? And it could be, it's like I really care about this community. So you can help out with CLUSA or BRI. It's like I really care about uh, girls in developing countries. I really care about um, education. So like, and then you can do what David did and every nice person has to help you. And then when they start helping you, um, you will end up building the entrepreneurial skills because you're constantly like, you know, telling a story and selling your idea and like, it's not even your idea. It could be like, hey, this is why you should care. You end up building different types of relationships, better relationships. Um, when you send messages to people and say like, hey, will you help me? Some people that help you, you'll end up becoming much better friends with. 
Uh, and so this is one way you can start developing the muscles young in a way that's very, very immediate, and you can do a ton of good. Well said, Andrew. 